Welcome back to yet another episode of Caffeinated CX, where we talk about customer experience and stuff, all in a hyper-caffeinated state. I'm David, the Caffeinated CXO, and before we begin today's episode, I'd like to ask you to do the stereotype, like, review, rate, comment, and share the show so we can make the show grow. That's right. Growth. Today we're going to be talking about the importance of your team leads or coaches on your contact center floor, the best practices, what their responsibilities are, and to what standards you need to hold them to. They are one of, if not, the most important roles in your contact center, so you have to get this right. This, your tech stack, your training curriculum, and your culture are all pillars that hold your contact center up. Without these, your center will fall, and that ain't good. In fact, that's bad. Wait a minute. This voice doesn't feel right. Wait. Oh no. Help. Cough, cough. There we go. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Ghosts and ghouls, squirrels and lemurs, and everybody in between. It's good to be back. It's good to have my voice back. Isn't it? I think so. I think so. If you're watching it on YouTube or Spotify with their video option, you can see some uh, footage of the original Guild Wars 2005. Why? Something to look at, something to do, something to have and to hold, and just see how utterly mediocre I am at one of my favorite games. So, today, like promised in the intro, we are going to talk about the importance of your team lead or coaches or whatever it is that you call them. Now, typically, a team lead or a coach will have a few call center reps, right? The customer service reps or your sales reps or whoever depends on your contact center, right? Under them. Usually this number is five to six, can get up to 10. Uh, anything more than that is a little ridiculous and you shouldn't do that, right? You should uh, either elevate somebody else up to a team lead so they don't go over 10 or don't have that many people. I, I, I don't know. Um, so we're going to start with the... What does their week look like? How should they start their week? And let's talk about it. The first step is when they come in for the week, the first thing they should do is individual check-ins with their team members. Right? So... Uh, connect with each team member individually through a voice call using Dialpad, Discord voice chat, Zoom, Microsoft Teams, even over the phone works. Because uh, this personal touch builds rapport with your team members and allows you to address any immediate concerns or questions. Also on this call, you should set weekly goals. So individual goals probably decided in last week's coaching right you just want to reiterate those you want to hammer down on those you want to re-express those so they're top of mind right so you want to also stay updated so scan your discord or slack channels to see if you missed anything on your days off um you want to be the best informed person out on the floor. This is definitely going to help you when you transition over into your floor support time of the day. All right now, at the beginning of the week, after you've done your check ins and you've said hi to everybody and you've reviewed everything, um, you want to review the previous week's uh, reports, right? You, you want to see where how everybody ended up, how the center ended up, what the KPIs are looking like. Um, you also want to look for any red flags, and this comes from a, uh, trades call center 
specific thing here, but you, you have your own that you know. Uh, our red flags would be like low booking rates, high cancellation rates, or anomalies in call counts. Like someone took a buttload of calls, but only said that five of those calls were leads, right? And booked all five. That's That's great. But if you took 60 calls in a day and five of those were leads, something's either up with uh, your account or the marketing, both of which are essential to know. So um, you have to start the week with a thorough review and setting clear goals, which sets the tone for a productive and successful work uh, week ahead. So pretty standard stuff there. Let's talk about daily routines. Uh, morning routine. You want to review your weekly stats. Begin each day by reviewing the previous day's uh, CSR stats and the cancellation rates. This is again specific. Um, look for red flags such as those low uh, booking rates, high cancellations rates, or discrepancies in call counts. Uh, again, check for announcements. Things can change in any contact center within minutes, let alone hours or the you know, the 16 hours between your shifts, right? So you want to individual check-ins, just, you know, just reach out to your team, right? Whatever the daily goals are. And then you want to get into some of the following. Your call audits, right? Um, throughout the day, perform call audits to ensure quality and adherence to protocols, Provide constructive feedback to CSRs to improve their performance. Now, this can be done through chat, right, through a DM. Uh, it doesn't need to be anything specific. It, you don't need to get on video chat every time that you do a call audit and it was a bad call, right? Save that for the weekly coaching. Um, now, for the weekly coachings, you want to get those done every week at the same time, on the same day of every week. Consistency is your best practice there. Uh, at the end of the day, review the daily performance. Uh, review the day's performance metrics. Note any achievements or areas for improvement to discuss on the next coaching session. Uh, plan for tomorrow. Set priorities and objectives for the next day. Ensure that, the, that any pending issues or follow-ups are addressed promptly. Uh, team engagement, engage with the team through the team channels, either on Slack or Discord, or if you're in person, in person, do it up. Uh, provide encouragement and recognize individual and team achievements. Uh, I'm going to get into the uh, team-specific channel in just a little bit here. All right. So now we use Discord in our in our center. Uh, I know a lot of other people use Slack or Microsoft Teams. We chose Discord. Why? Because it's fun. It's easy. It looks better. The aesthetic is a bit better than Slack, in my humble opinion. Hashtag not sponsored. So, team Discord channels are the heartbeat of your team's communication and collaboration. They serve as a virtual space where team members can connect, share ideas, ask questions, and support each other. These channels play a crucial role in fostering a sense of community and belonging among team members, which is essential for a positive work environment and team morale. I am reading verbatim from a training manual that I wrote up today. Um, ideas to keep your team Discord channels lively because... There is nothing worse or more disconcerting than a team channel that is a literal uh, ghost town or just a copy-paste of the general announcements channel, right? No. You want to keep these as lively as possible. Um, so daily check-ins, again, check in with the entire team. Uh, make sure everything, everything and everyone is doing well. Uh, share success stories. Celebrate individual and team achievements. Whether it's hitting a target, resolving a challenging uh, customer issue, or learning a new skill, sharing success stories boosts morale and motivates others. Uh, knowledge sharing. Encourage team members to share tips, tricks, and best practices. Hey, have you tried this rebuttal on X? Stuff like that. Right. Um, 
fun activities. You can have trivia, um, photo contests, virtual team building activities. Um, all of that stuff is good and keeps the conversation going. Um, you can have it for feedback and suggestions. That's always welcome. Uh, theme days, you can do that. Um, and, you know, of course, regular updates, of course, because why not? So, uh, weekly coaching for CSRs. So, <clears throat> now the coaching focus areas usually are something of the following, right? Call quality score. Uh, review recent call recordings to assess the CSR's call quality score. Provide specific feedback on areas of improvement such as clarity, professionalism, adherence to scripts or guidelines, uh, booking rate, uh, discuss the CSR's booking rate and identify strategies to improve it. This could include refining their pitch, overcoming objections, or leveraging customer insights to personalize their approach. This is very, very easily done with most CRMs. Um, focus on developing soft skills such as empathy, rapport building, active listening, uh, role play. A little role play should be in part of every coaching, regardless. Um, work on sales skills like uh, rebuttals, objection handling, building value, uh, provide real life examples and scenarios and role play. Um, attendance, address any attendance issues and emphasize the importance of being punctual and reliable. Offer support if there are any underlying reasons for attendance issues. There's only a few reasons that people are late or absent a lot, right? Most of those can be changed with a simple schedule change. Maybe something happened in their life that they don't want to bring forward, and they can no longer make it at 9 on the dot, but they can make it right on time at 9.30, right? That works. That's the easy fix. Sometimes you do that, right? And uh, they're still like 10 minutes late each shift, and at that point, that's where a pip would come in because yeah with uh some jobs like knowledge work something like that it doesn't really matter does it when you stroll into the office as long as you get all your work done when it's customer care when you're dealing with customers and as rigid as call center schedules are that 10 15 minutes makes a huge difference especially if someone else is waiting to go on break don't be a jerk be on time have some respect for yourself and for your other co-workers, okay? Um, but yeah, and the team lead coach is definitely the first line of defense when it comes to that. Uh, in the, after that, it needs to be kicked up to a supervisor, manager, director, whoever, right? If it becomes egregious. Uh, there's uh, three different coaching styles that I want to kind of cover here before this gets too long because I do want to also do one more thing at the end of this um, directive coaching is providing specific instructions and guidance on how to improve performance the style useful for addressing specific issues that require clear direction then there's I'm gonna butcher the pronunciation of this because why not facilitative coaching encourage CSRs to find solutions themselves by asking open-ended questions and guiding them through the problem-solving process. This style promotes self-discovery and ownership of improvement. And then there's collaborative coaching. Work together with the CSR to set goals and develop action plans. This style fosters a sense of partnership and shared accountability for improvement. When to use each style. Use directive coaching when the CSR needs clear guidance on how to improve a specific aspect of their performance. Facilitative coaching is effective when the CSR has the potential to identify and solve problems themselves with the right guidance. These are the ones, the ones that take more to that one. They're the ones that your next pool of team leading coaches probably are coming from, right? And then there's collaborative coaching. Uh, works well when both the coach and the CSR can contribute their ideas and insights to create a comprehensive improvement plan <clears throat> so again there is uh, there is much to be said about consistency in coaching it should be at the same time on the same day of every week 
Um, if that's not possible, let's say the team lead is out for that week or that day, they can delegate it to either someone from the quality assurance team or a supervisor or even another team lead so that the CSR does not miss out on that training because that's bad. If the CSR is out, then schedule it for the next available time uh, so that it still happens that week. If the CSR is out that week, while well, they're out that week, it, it's fine. It's fine. All right. So now what metrics or KPIs should you hold your team leaders up to? All right. So now you already should know your target metrics for your center, right? You can mirror those to your team lead. If all of their agents are meeting their metrics, they're good to go. If on average, all the agents are meeting their minimum standards, then that's okay. Um, you just want to deal with those other those people that are dragging it down. Because if, even if they got up to the minimal standards, they'd be above minimal standards just going by the average, right? And then... So that's probably the best one to hold them up to. Uh, that, making sure that all the coachings happen on time, I would send out a random or an anonymous survey uh, to their team members just to get some feedback on them that you can share with the team lead since they're anonymous, right? It's It should be fine. Um, so... If you're watching Guild Wars here, I'm about to die, I think. So, yeah, I took on some char at too low of a level. Um, that's fine. That's fine. So, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, but, yeah, and you want to have that as a KPI as well. You want passing, right? And on this uh, survey, you can have things like, my coach listens to me. My coach... Uh, cares about my opinion. My coach has regular check-ins and coachings with me, things like that. So there you go. Those are some KPIs that you can hold them up to. There's some other ones too, but those are the ones that we mostly do. Um, I also would have them uh, take calls as well. You can't coach what you don't do. At least that's my opinion. So it's really hard to coach somebody if you haven't taken a call in a year, right? So on that, I would either allocate like two hours a day to be on the phones or 10 hours a week and they can split it up any way they want, right? So that's, uh, that's that. Um, but yeah, it's hard to coach what you don't do with, and you know, letting, having them listen to you. So, cause that's a whole other thing, right? So you want you want them to listen to you, right? You you want to be credible. And when you're on the phones, you have to be at or above, preferably above the metric standards for the department. Uh, there's no reason not to uh, be. If you're a team lead coach, you should know every trick of the trade. Your product or service knowledge should be top tier. Uh, the only person that should know more than you, honestly, might be the owner of the company right? Uh, you should know just as much as your manager or director or supervisor. And, uh, if you don't know what that is, then, uh, you have to, uh, learn, right? How do you learn? You can either look it up. Most likely your company has a database a knowledge base, or you can simply ask, right? And anybody who's worth their, uh, weight in salt what worth or salt will uh be able to help you and point you in the right direction so but your knowledge and your your knowledge should be top tier and if it's not get it top tier so there's that yeah so do all that and uh don't be afraid to ask for help if you need it. Don't be afraid to ask for advice if you need it, right? Don't be afraid to be like, hey, I can't coach this person. Can you please help, right? 
because some people they don't mesh with their team lead coach and that's neither the team leads or the CSR's fault they just don't mesh there's no chemistry and that's okay it happens so it is what it is so let's go ahead and there is one other thing that I wanted to show you so let's do that while we still have time together okay okay this is suno.ai and we're gonna make a song okay okay we're gonna go to create I'm gonna do one of two things uh, we can do one of two things we can make custom mode and write our own lyrics and everything or we can have it doing it what kind of music do you want to listen to a an epic fantasy symphonic power metal song And then we hit create. And through the magic of time, it finished. Beyond the Veil. Dramatic, epic, symphonic power metal. So let's click on this one. And it has lyrics here. In the realm of dreams, where sorrows lie, a journey begins from realms up high. We soar through skies to a world unknown, where legends are born and heroes are shown. With swords of steel and fire ablaze, we battle the darkness in endless days. Through perilous paths, we march with might. In the name of honor, we stand and fight. Thank you for listening, our tale untold. Through our words and music, our story unfolds. With every chord and note, we summon the powers of caffeinated CX, our hearts forever empowered. Those are, those are crap lyrics, right? But it's fine. Let's see what it sounds like. Well, that was neat. All right, so that was version one. There's two versions that come with it. So we played this one. Let's play this one. Same lyrics, slightly different style. So let's give that one a whirl.
All right, well, there you go. This is suno.ai. So you get, uh, like, you can make 10 songs a day for free, or you can do what I did and spend $10 and get 2,000 or however many uh, <coughs> credits a month. So, which is like 200 songs. So, they're really fun to make. It's uh, really fun to make, like, songs out of customer reviews. So, do what you will with that information. It's just a fun thing. Um, but that's it. I just wanted to show you that. I do have an album. Um, I'll put it down in the little link description that I made with it. Uh, using custom. And honestly, this is the first AI platform I've actually spent money on. So, there you go. Have fun, guys. I'll see you next time.